Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn with CCM Magazine and today our special guest is Tommy Prophet. Now you have heard Tommy's music everywhere on television, movies, on your radio, but today he is coming to us with a very special new project called Birth of a King and it is a new Christmas project that he has recorded with everybody. So I'm just really excited to talk to Tommy today. Hi Tommy, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I know we're both here in Middle Tennessee covered in snow, so I'm a little cold this morning. How about you? Yes, I know. It's interesting. We normally don't get it like this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you have done a new Christmas album where you have written and composed, um, and most of it is very classic standard Christmas songs, but it has a very different feel to it this time called Birth of a King. What made you want to do a Christmas album? Man, I've actually wanted to do a big Christmas album since 2005. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was in college and one of my classes, like the assignment was to take a classic uh, Christmas carol and like reimagine it, right? And rearrange it. And so I did that and I enjoyed it so much. I was like, man, one day, like I want to do like my spin on the whole, like the whole canon of mm -hmm. Christmas hymns. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. traditional hymns that I grew up listening to and singing. So, um, 15 years later, I finally got the chance to make that album. It was kind of like a dream come true. So I'm super excited about it. What made you want to stick with that? I mean, 15 years is a long time to make a project happen. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I just, I think I was just really excited about it. And over the last 15 years, like ideas would come, choruses would come, you know, like things that I would do to some of the songs. Like I kind of had in the back of my mind, you know, just waiting yeah. till one day, you know, I knew I'd get to it and I just had too much on my plate mm -hmm. every year. And finally this year when the whole world kind of locked themselves in quarantine, I kind of took advantage of that time and I jumped right in. And that's the reason I was able to finally get to it in 2020. Yeah. Well, it's a great Christmas album. And it's a huge Christmas album. It's 17 songs, and everybody's on it. A few of those people are Rita Kingdom and Crowder, Turnwells, and Jordan Smith, um, Chris Tomlin, Carrie Job, and so many others. How were you able to get all of these people to jump on board with an album for you? Well, it's interesting. I mean, most of them are friends or people I've worked with before. Um, and as I was arranging the songs, I kind of like had like a specific voice would I would hear a voice in my head for that song like man this would sound great for with Crowder over it or with Carrie Job she has to be the one on it so I kind of arranged the whole the all the songs recorded all the music knowing I was going to ask them but before they even knew about it okay. right I kind of like planned and hoped like maybe I'll, at least at least some of them would be willing to do it uh and thankfully like every single one was like Mm -hmm. yes this is awesome I can't wait and so they all they all said yes and it was I had this vision of like just this big collaborative thing like artists from all different backgrounds coming together to make like this really big epic Christmas soundtrack you know what I mean yeah well it is epic and that was the feeling I got when I listened to the whole project I'll tell you, my two favorite songs are Noel and Go Tell It on the Mountain. But every song on there, I think, is, it could stand alone and doesn't necessarily need a whole album project to be a part of because I think they could all be played radio, all be a Christmas classic in someone's home. And I was very impressed with it. When someone sits oh, down... that's awesome. You're welcome. When someone sits down with this album and listens to it start to finish, what do you want them to take away from that? Man, well, honestly, it's weird because... I feel like the like the traditional story of Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Like think about this this synopsis. If you were to read this on iTunes, right, next to a movie, it's like a king is being born, greeted by angels who's coming to save the world. Mm -hmm. Like that's the most epic synopsis you could yeah. ever write, right? And so I was like, man, the epic story needs a soundtrack to go with it, like an epic soundtrack that feels like <clears throat> like Lord of the Rings level grandness, right? And so I kind of just want to emphasize that story, like the power of that story. Because we, we, you know, we sing these songs and people just brush right through them, you know, and because of the familiarity of the lyrics and the melody, the joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. It's like, yeah. no, you just said, let earth receive her king. Like, that's like regal, 
you know what I mean? Like how yeah. much bigger can you get? And so I think, I think that was, that's like the premise. Right. And so I think I wanted it to be more of like a powerful, impactful story as well. You know, I think people that may not, you know, believe that story might still appreciate the story as though that, you know, they watch Lord of the Rings, not like it's a true story, <laughs> but people that, you know, are believers, I feel like they, might be hit with maybe something that's a little more powerful or impactful mm -hmm. than you would expect when you put on a Christmas album. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. there's moments of worship sprinkled in there undeniably, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I yeah. think it, it makes it more accessible to people that might not normally listen to yeah. that. You well, know, it's not, it's not a Christmas album that has the fun. <clears throat> on it. it is the, right. The epic tale of, the story of, of Christ coming to earth. And you can feel that. And it really does feel like a worship album. I didn't think about that, but it really does. Um, so is there any song that you wish you could have added to the album? Because it's a big album. <laughs> I feel, I feel like it's complete in like exactly the way it's supposed to be. And I, I wrestled for a long time, you know, with the track list and I wanted to make sure I got every song because I, I never want to do this again. Like, it was like, I want to do this once <laughs> and be done and cover them all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I almost put um, like an instrumental, like a big epic cinematic instrumental of Carol of the Bells on there. Yeah. And it just felt, it felt so weird because that was the one song that didn't have anything to do with the birth of a king. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't fit, fit the theme. And so... <clears throat> I think I, I pretty much tried to just cover all the big traditional, you know, I just, I didn't feel like, do you hear what I hear and little drummer boy, which are arguably the only two that are not on there. I didn't feel like they quite fit with the first Noel and Hark the Herald Angels sing and Silent Night and yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I do understand. So let's take a couple of minutes here um, before we wrap up our interview to talk about some fun things. So as a songwriter, yeah. do you have a favorite song or lyric that you've ever written? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Like, not, not to tie it in to the uh, Christmas album on purpose, but I feel like the chorus on Noel yes is one of is probably one of my favorite just choruses mm -hmm. you know that i've ever written and i wrote that back in 2013 oh, wow. um and just just been waiting for it to come to life one day you know what i mean but like just the power and the music and the words like i i feel like that might be one of my favorite uh choruses yeah oh i love that chorus um he is born is so good yeah yeah um, okay, so turn that question around. Is there a song or a lyric that you wish you had have written that someone else did? Oh, man. Um, not off the top of my head. I mean, <laughs> Good Good Father was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's a, I mean, Pat's awesome. He's a, such a good songwriter. You know, that song is really... I mean, it's artistic, but accessible at the same time. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, very much so. Those always seem to be the hardest questions I ask anybody, but I love to see people's reactions. Yeah, it's like, I wasn't ready for that this morning. I need more <laughs> coffee before we get into that stuff. So. That's okay. Now, before we leave, is there a message of hope that you would like to leave our viewers today? Um, man, yeah, I feel like this year was uh, pretty like the journey of making that Christmas album became a spiritual journey for me that I wasn't really expecting, you know, I just thought I was going to make Christmas music and throughout it as some of these courses and the worship stuff started, you know, being written and stuff, I decided not to run from it and just see where like God wanted to take that, you know? And I just felt like he was in that process. And when you, I think this year of all years, people probably need, hope more than ever before and my you know my my hope in this project was that people would be reminded that hope has come it already is here and you know that him we turn our or turn your eyes upon jesus like it says turn your eyes upon jesus and the things 
earth will grow strangely dim. Like there's something weird about when you have moments of worship just by yourself, whether you're in your car or in your bedroom, that refocuses your heart and your eyes. And it doesn't change your circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, the bills are still there and the the attitudes are, from other people are still there and all the circumstances in life, the financial situation is still there, but it weighs a lot less and it hits you yeah. differently. You know what I mean? And I think it's, it's a daily recalibration of your eyes and your heart on what matters. And I think when we do that, the things that are in life that bring us down so much and so heavy probably won't have such a hold on us. You know what I mean? If we continue to redirect our eyes on, on Jesus, you know? Yeah. Well, Tommy, thank you so much for stopping by today and talking to CCM Magazine. And everyone, make sure you go out, download, stream, Birth of a King. It is out now. You will not be unhappy when you listen to it. It is a beautiful, beautiful album. Thanks, Tommy. Yeah, thanks so much. Absolutely.